All right, so last time we understand the uh, basic idea behind block ciphers. Now it is time to see uh, internal workings of block ciphers. So today I will talk about three different block ciphers, present, des, and AES. Historically, it should be uh, des, AES, and present, but it, present is a lightweight block cipher. So the design is very simple and it is very easy to understand. This is why we start with present, okay? So uh, in this picture, I actually almost explain everything about present. So it is a very simple design. Block size is 64 bits. Key length depends on the user. You can choose 80 bits and 128 bits. But nowadays, 80 bits provide you, you a very short uh, 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 security for a very short time. So if you want, for instance, just a few hours of security, you can use these keys. But if you want your encrypted data to be secure for many days, then you have to move on to 128 bits. So actually, the algorithm uh, we will see in a minute will not get uh, too slow if you move from here to here. But for the lightweight devices, storing you know, uh, 80 bits and 128 bits uh, might be different for you because you might not have that amount of free memory anyway. So this is why we have this option. This is also in ISO standards, both of them. But if I were uh, ISO, I will remove this 80-bit version, okay? Because with GPUs, we can, you know, millions of GPUs, uh, users on the internet come get together and break present 80 in a very fast way, all right? So as you can see, the block size is 64 bits. So there are 64 lines here representing bits, all of them. So this is just a single round. Recall that in SPN ciphers, we said that there's a key addition layer, substitution layer, and the permutation layer. So in the key addition layer, 64-bit round key is XORed with the input. Regardless of your master key length, a key schedule algorithm provides 64-bit round keys. We will see in the next slide. So here you have the zeroed round key. And here you will have the first round key and the second round key. So this picture is repeated 31 times. At the end of the 31 round, here you will also add the final key addition so that the cipher, uh, the cipher text will not be decrypted one round, okay? Because if you produce cipher text here, since these steps are easy to reverse, you can start from here and come here, okay? So you have the 64 bits, you exhort it with the round key, then you perform substitution. So there's a single S box here. Since there are four bit inputs in hexadecimal, we have uh, 16 inputs starting from zero to F. So the output also will be from uh, values between zero and F, but in different order. So here you provide confusion. So you have 16 S boxes here, but all of them are the same. And provided here in this simple table. So for instance, if your input is one in hexadecimal, in bits, it becomes zero, 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 one. You go to the table and find one and realize that the output is five. So you convert into base two. So in bits, this becomes zero, one, zero, one, okay? So this way you provide actually confusion. Most of the security comes from here. But since these four bits affected by the S box in these four bits, since this S box doesn't affect the other bits, we don't have any diffusion. So we have to mix the bits so that a, a small change here will affect other parts of the cipher in the following rounds. This is why we have a simple permutation here. So it's, you simply replace the position of the bits. For instance, this bit stays here. So in the next round, it will come here and go as for this S box. But this bit goes here. So in the next round, it will be the input from here and so on and so forth. So one change in this S box in the next round affects four S boxes. And this permutation is chosen so that in the following round, this bit actually affects at most 16, I mean, all of the S boxes at the end. So this is how you choose this permutation. You don't choose it because you know the picture looks nice. And actually this picture is to, just to visualize. Normally in the paper, you look at it and they will give you a 
a permutation table showing which bit goes to which bit position. So in this case, zero bit goes to zero, but first bit goes to, I think, 16 and so on. So you will have a table. So once so you want to implement this, actually, you will put these positions maybe in an array and do this in that way. So this actually explains everything except the key schedule. So currently, we don't know how this 80-bit key converted into 16-bit, 64-bit round keys. So in the next slide, I'll show it to you. So assume that you are using the 80-bit key version. So you choose a master key, this K, and let's uh, label them from 7 to 9 to 0. OK, so these are the 80 bits. So as the first, maybe the zero to round XOR, the leftmost 64 bits are chosen as your round key. OK, then you uh, consider this 80 bit master key as a register and perform some operations on them. And uh, in the first step, you actually rotated 19 bits to the right. As you can see, 19 becomes the rightmost bit here. And the, uh, these 19 bits go to here, becoming the leftmost 19 bits. So there is a small rotation operation, 19 bits rotate to right. Then you perform the SBAX operation to the leftmost four bits. So you're only affecting only four bits, not the whole 80 bit register. Then you add the round counter to these five bits. Round counter actually is the number of the round. So in the first round, you XOR with 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. But in the 31st round, in uh, binary notation, it is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So in the last step, you XOR it with this. So this is a simple step, but it is just to break the symmetry. OK? So this prevents some kind of attacks. This is why it is here. So here, there is a, a picture that explains this step. So this is your 80-bit master key. As you can see, the leftmost 64-bit becomes your round key i. Then you uh, perform operations to this 80-bit register. So for instance, as you can see, you take the rightmost 19 bits and take it to the left. Okay, These 64 bits become the right part. Also, these uh, four bits, which becomes the leftmost four bits, are fed into the S box. And finally, you perform this uh, five bit uh, XOR operation as the round key here, as you can see. OK, very simple. But as you can see, this doesn't provide much diffusion. So you have a master key here. So this is your round key zero, for instance, 64 bit. And you perform elder bit operations. And now you say that this is leftmost 64 bits becomes your next round key. So if you go back to picture, so this is your first 64 bit. And then you exert with the second one here, which is obtained here. So you repeat this process 31 times to provide all of the round keys. So very simple. But the uh, question is that what happens if I choose 128 bit key instead of the 80 bit key? So actually, you add a few more steps here. So the idea is simple. Now you have the master key of 128 bits. Now you rotate 64 bits to the right, as you can see. Then, but uh, your round key is still the leftmost 64 bits. Sorry, so sorry, sorry, not the rotation. I made a mistake. I am correcting it again. So you have 128 bits, but your leftmost 64 bits is your first round key. Then you perform the rotation to the right as 67 bits. I said 64 bits here, but actually it is 67. Then you perform SBACs to the leftmost four bits, but you also apply another SBACs to the second leftmost four bits. Then you add the round key to these bits, and that's it. So as you can see, we change the uh, rotation amount. In the 80-bit key, we rotate 19 bits. But since we have a bigger register here, we rotate 67 bits. And instead of applying one S-box, we apply two S-boxes. So moving from present 80 to 128 has two FX. You perform one more S-box operation, which doesn't cost anything, actually, compared to whole encryption process. Also, 
instead of storing 80-bit master key, now you have to store 128 bits. So this might be a problem if you are working on a really, really small device. Okay. But other than that, as you can see, it doesn't provide any uh, speed down because uh, the number of runs are still the same, 31 runs. In AES, we will see that when you change the key size, the run numbers will change. But in this scenario, it does not. Okay. So let me show you how the key schedule works. Actually, uh, this can be used as a, a test vector so that if you implement present, you can just check these values to see if you implement it correctly. So once you implement present key schedule correctly for the 80-bit key, assume that you chose every 80-bit as zero. So in hexadecimal notation, there are 20 zeros here, but actually there are 80 bits here. So leftmost 64 bits, recall that are used as the first round key. So all of them are zero. Now what I do is I rotate it, but if you rotate all zeros, it becomes all zeros again. Then you perform S-box operation to the leftmost four bits, but the input is zero. So let's go back to the S-box operation. It says that zero goes to C. So at this point, the leftmost part becomes C. Then you add the round counter, but it doesn't affect the leftmost 64 bits. So the output is C and zeros. Now you perform these operations again. You rotate, so the C value becomes something uh, around here. So you C goes to 19 bits to the right. Then you perform another SPAX operation, uh, round counter XOR. So the result becomes this. Okay but there are still a lot of zeros as you can see. If you continue in this way, you can see that the diffusion is really slow. Yeah, still seeing many zeros because the, uh, since this is a lightweight cipher, they try to have a very simple key schedule. So this is why uh, it doesn't diffuse in a very fast way. But if you continue this way, at the end, this is your last round key, okay? Again, this, you, this can be used as test vectors. If you implement this cipher, you can check if all 0 to bit key provides these round keys. Okay, if it doesn't, then this means that you made an implementation error. Now let's look at the encryption. Assume that this is the master key I chose. So this is these are my round keys. Now I want to encrypt a plain text, which is also all zeros, 64 bit zeros. I chose the key as the 80 bit zeros. Now, after the first round of encryption, you end up with uh, eight Fs, I think, and eight zeros, right? Okay, so let's see why this is the case. So let's go back to the round function picture. So we have all zeros here. Our round key also all zeros. So at this point, before the S boxes, we have all zeros. Since the input of all of these boxes are zero, we end up with C. Recall that C is just 12 in hexadecimal notation to integers. So 12 means one, one, zero, zero. But look at, let's look at the uh, permutation. Here uh, we have one, one, zero, zero. So zero stays here. The second zero stays here. If you divide the picture from the middle, so these rightmost two bits stay on the right part, but these ones are mapped to the left part of the picture. So this is why after these operations, once you divide the picture from here, rightmost 32 bits become zero and leftmost 32 bits become one. So this is why at this point, round output is all Fs and zeros. If you continue this way, you will see this, then this. Now, as you can see, all, we started with all zeros. But now we lost all, all of those zeros, right? Because now after some point on, we started to have randomness, okay? Because the confusion and diffusion uh, started to act. And after most probably eight runs, you will, these results will pass most of the statistical randomness tests, okay? But of course, this is not enough. It, it might look random, but you can break a cipher that is designed for like eight runs like this present because it's a very simple design. For this reason, you the designer chose 31 runs. So at the end, 31 round output is this. So you exhort it with your last round key and obtain the cipher text. 
So this is the result. So created TXT files with all zero bits. Okay, then encrypted, and you will realize that uh, the ciphertext becomes this. Okay, in hexadecimal notation, of course. Of course, if you want try to print it, some of these bytes might be in the ASCII table uh, symbols that you cannot print on the screen, so you might not see it. So this is why we work in hexadecimals or you know work in bits and so on. Okay. So you can use this as your test vectors. And if you implement present, you can check if your key schedule algorithm and the encryption algorithm works correctly just by verifying these numbers with yours.